Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. I have some genuinely good things to tell you about today. Now, I made a video on a guy known as Nikocado Avocado two years ago, then a year ago, and I kind of like it when my videos have like a trilogy thing to it. You know, when I cover somebody initially, then I kind of scratch the surface a little bit more and they turn out to be the funniest person in the world. Like, Nico Kata was genuinely playing a character that was about one of the douchiest things that I've ever seen on the platform. And, uh, you know, at the time, a lot of my criticisms for Nico Kata was he genuinely portrays himself in content like mukbangs where he's constantly eating the most disgusting food at the most disgustingly high amount of quantities imaginable and the guy was slowly ending his life for views. I wasn't the only one that covered it. Plenty of other people covered it. I know Charlie covered it. I know even all the way into the political sphere with like people like Candace Owens, they ended up covering Nico Kato. The guy went pretty mainstream uh, in about the worst ways. People were criticizing this guy's poor life decisions. And obviously he ballooned up from a uh, cute little guy to uh, an absolute huge person in a very short amount of time because of the diet that he was consuming. Nico Kato genuinely would eat like 40 Subway sandwiches for one gram lost on his weight. Now, of course, Nico Kato, in one of the videos a year ago where he's collaborating with Hungry Fat Chick, he's eating what appears to be like a, a, a 10,000 calories worth of tackies. Now, of course, this is ramen noodles baked with tackies, all right? Uh, I've never had a tacky in my life. I don't think they sell those in Canada, to be honest with you. He puts it into a bowl, uh, and then, of course, you know, they just consume it. They even actually garnish it with literal tackies. It's insane, and if you ever kind of wonder, do they eat all the food? I couldn't really answer the question, but they definitely eat more of it than most other individuals out there. And god damn, at least that's a Coke Zero, I guess. It's better than nothing, shit. Now, of course, about three weeks ago, Nikocado Avocado uploaded this onto his channel, all right? Now, if you're looking at it real carefully, it's still tackies and fast food. But Nico Kato looks considerably smaller than last time. Now, of course, if we look at Nico Kato in this page right over here, he's proud to announce some actual weight loss and a metric ton of it. So excited. This is going to be like a recipe to show you exactly. Hi, I know I'm skinny. You don't have to tell me. I lost 89 pounds. And I lost. I'm looking. What? 89? God damn! <laughs> Holy hell, 89 pounds is a lot. And if I did the metric conversion in front of you for the people outside America, you would also agree. My arms, oh my God. You don't even recognize me, I know. And this is not pre-recorded. Everyone keeps saying you don't post as much anymore. I feel like you're, it's not old. What the heck? This is, first of all, you know it's new because this Little Caesars uh, pretzel crust has only been out for like a couple of weeks. Um, don't get me wrong, he's still eating like shit but at least he's been working out. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's very noticeable. And honestly, it's good news because for the longest time, my biggest criticisms were Nico Kato is eating himself pretty much to death. And I think he's kind of realized it. Like, you know, the last time I really saw Nico Kato was when he was on the CPAP machine. Uh, which like, again, it's like, dude, you are, you, you, once you start getting on machines like that and the moment you start getting winded cutting into a steak is the moment you got to start really reevaluating your life choices. Again, I'm not making these videos again to like shame him for being larger than the average person. I'm just saying it because goddamn, when you're eating like 10,000 calories every other day to record a mukbang on YouTube, uh, again, fetish content, maybe that's not worth, you know, basically ending your life earlier over. Now, of course, the other people that have collaborated with them haven't been so lucky. I know this one hungry fat chick who I only watched a little bit because she collaborated with Nikocado Avocado still consumes an absolutely insane amount of content. And from the stuff that I watched out of her, she definitely doesn't seem like she's in the best of places. Uh, genuinely, when you get to the size and your health is, you know, in such a bad state, you definitely do get a lot of mental pro like, you definitely are not mentally all the way there. Uh, I, I, I'm a firm believer in how you treat your body physically is how, you be, how you'll be reflected mentally. And genuinely, when I was a far heavier person, uh, I will tell you right now, I wasn't even in the best of head spaces. It was a genuinely bad moment. And to be honest with you, when I look back, the way that I had a relationship with food by constantly eating literal junk was pretty much a reflection of where my mental state was at the time. 
Some people cope with drugs, some people cope with alcohol, some people cope with gambling, some people cope, again, by constantly eating themselves into a state they'll never ever get out of. And even after losing weight, I'll tell you straight up, there's actual permanent damage that I've probably done to my body, uh, which cannot be reversed. That's how dangerous this ends up becoming, and that's why I kind of talked uh, against it. So, you know, honestly, in positive situations, Nico Cotto losing his weight to this point uh, is absolutely a W to C. And it's one thing that, you know, if, if this doesn't inspire you to enter a journey to better your own life, I honestly don't know what will. Now, part of me also wonders if this is because of YouTube's TOS. Obviously, Nico Cotto is somebody that was doing pretty well on YouTube, but content that Nico Cotto makes isn't usually profitable. Even if you get millions of views off of making content like this, it's still fetishistic content. Your CPMs are never gonna be great, and it's one of the reasons I assume that Nico Cotto definitely did have a Patreon, OnlyFans, and a million other avenues of making revenue because he was never as profitable as your average YouTuber. Typically, the more family friendly you are, the better your rates end up becoming. When you're making fetishistic content like this, I doubt your CPM is even close. You might even be making less than YouTube shorts producers, which are already uh, pretty much like creating content for free. I also have to imagine that this is due to a new update on YouTube's community guidelines. So if you didn't know, May 2023, uh, literally like this month, YouTube up updated their eating disorders policy where literally to uh, produce content for the internet, they may now, uh, they may now remove imitatable content, uh, age restrict the content, and of course show like special resource panels on videos for people to actually reach crisis centers. Now, one of the things about their community guidelines for posting anything involving self-harm, which is something I talked about regarding this content, but YouTube went a step further and implemented eating disorders. So again, they said YouTube users should not be afraid to talk about the topics uh, of eating disorders and mental health in a supportive and non-harmful way. If you have an eating disorder, definitely seek help, okay? There's resources out there, definitely go against it. When I was a younger guy in high school, they talked a lot about eating disorders. And uh, I can kind of see why. It's very easy to get one and it's very difficult to break away from an eating disorder. There's plenty of people on both sides of the spectrum. Very, very skinny people and very, very larger people both have an eating disorder of, of certain kinds. They're, they're not healthy in any capacity. They have to start maintaining some level of normalcy if they want to live long, fulfilling lives. Now, of course, you've also got uh, situations where YouTube says, there are times when content is created that is sensitive and may pose a risk for some users. So of course, this is content that contains very, very heavy topics like self-harms. But when they talk about eating disorders, one of the things they say is don't post the following content, content promoting or glorifying self-harm, uh, you know, suicide and eating disorders. Now, of course, obviously nobody should make content promoting the first two in this list, but when they talk about eating disorders, I really hope this isn't as vague as it sounds. Because honestly, mukbang content does appear to be content that promotes the idea of eating heavily, which of course is an eating disorder. Anything outside of orderly conduct is disorderly, okay? That's kind of what we're going with uh, over here. And then you've got instructions on, uh, you know, engaging in eating disorders and including how to conceal them. Honestly, I think making a 10,000 calorie meal and showing people how to consume it on camera might as well count as instruction. See, I don't really get the vagueness of these guidelines, nor do I necessarily even agree with them. I feel like if YouTube is gonna go after eating disorders, they pretty, they, they gotta be pretty specific. Uh, otherwise, I actually think mukbang YouTubing may actually die out given the fact that these are the vaguest community guidelines I've ever seen. I'm not saying these. this is the reason that Nico Cotto lost weight. Obviously, this just kicked in this month. Uh, he's obviously been on a weight loss journey for a while, and I'm proud of it. But looking into this content in the future, I definitely don't see the future of mukbang content being as uh, profitable or as alive as it really has been. I know it is popular on YouTube and various parts of the internet, but you know, given how vague these guidelines are, I really don't see a future for it on YouTube. Uh, not that I agree with that. I feel like if you wanna upload content, you should definitely upload whatever kind of content that you want. Do I think that the mukbang genre is a bit impressionable? Sure, 
But I wish YouTube just straight up said, hey, if you want to eat gross amounts of content, uh, you know, either that's allowed or it isn't allowed. Because honestly, this could even affect channels like Shoe Nice or a lot of channels that do eating challenges or channels that cover things, you know, regarding alcohol, like people that are slamming whiskey bottles probably shouldn't be allowed as that I guess could qualify as straight up self-harm. Again, I don't really agree with vague guidelines so much as guidelines should be specific. But anyways, I wanted to bring that point up because I found that to be a little different. Obviously, we get notified of guideline changes because we should follow and, and adhere to them. So I wanted to kind of relay that because it sort of played along with this Nico Kato topic. But yeah, Nico Kato, honestly, I'm glad this finale ended with him not dying of early a, uh, you know, early because of poor life choices. If anything, Nico Kato is trying to go right back to the original cute twink that we remember and love, the one that played the violin and captured our, not the violin, sorry, no, the violin and captured our hearts, the one before the mukbang era. And honestly, I'm all for it, ladies and gentlemen. So congratulations to Nikocado Avocado. And honestly, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of positivity in a world that is so bleak at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. That being said, though, don't treat it, don't treat it like that for too long. We're going to be looking at North Korea again. <laughs> because things are shaken up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar. And uh, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.